Yeah. Hey, Doc, are we cracking on? Are we yeah. doing? Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Um, let me just. Um, my name's Abdul, um, Abdul Manan. I'm one of the medical directors of Blue Peanut. Um, and um, I'm going to uh, co-host this with my colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Imran Khan, uh, who's also medical director at Blue Peanuts. Hello, everybody's chatting. So I'm going to bring the chat box up. And what I'm also going to do is try and share my screen. Now, I always mess this up. So Imran tells me off. So Guys, make sure you tell him run off if he tells me off. All right, you be on my side today. Um, work experience. There you go. Can you see the screen? Um, uh, let me have a look. Yeah, that's good. And then if I go to slideshow from the beginning, yeah, great stuff. Can everybody see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, the chat's gone busy. Brilliant. I like it that way. Lovely, lovely. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a lovely morning, uh, uh, Pavan Preet. I think it was Pavan who said that. That's a lovely comment. Yeah, hope you guys are enjoying it too. It's been nice and sunny. Uh, it's been a great couple of days. Uh, well, not a couple of days, a few days actually. So, yeah, great stuff. Before the snow comes, I think we're going to get... Um, uh, why Blue Peanut? It's because uh, that's all we could think about at the time, Reed. We were having pistachios at the time. <laughs> it looked a bit blue to me. Uh, so no good reason other than that. But um, everybody seems to remember the name. So we stuck with it, basically. Do you think that's a good idea? Should we, or should we change our name, do you think? <laughs> or should we leave it as it is? Sounds unique. Keep it. It's unique. Yes. Red squirrel. <laughs> oh, God. Um, great. No, I like it. Keep it. All right. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. Happy days. Excellent. Right, guys, I've told you who I am. I've told you who Imran is. We're both medical directors. We're portfolio doctors. Uh, we work for the NHS. We do this as well. What about you guys? Where are you from? Where have you logged in from? Tell me. Um, where are these guys? Northampton, Ireland, London, Manchester, Leicester, North Yorkshire, Bournemouth, Derby, Birmingham, Milton Keynes, Saudi Arabia, Melbourne, Australia, Wembley, London, Glasgow, Hong Kong, Netherlands, Watford, St. Albans. Fantastic. Bradford, where's that? Where's Bradford? <laughs> Northeast. And Taiwan, living in Fantastic. Shropshire. Excellent. Brilliant. Listen, guys, you're welcome. You're more than welcome. Fantastic. Hey, come on, I know where Bradford is. I was just joking. It's uh, my, one of my favorite restaurants in Bradford. Um, Brilliant. Um, Muhammad had the head Oh, welcome, Noor. Welcome. I know Muhammad. Yes, I used to be my teacher in Manchester. Uh, fantastic. Really uh, good of you to join us. Yes, the food's amazing, Farah. It's beautiful uh, over there. There's quite a few restaurants there, actually, I enjoy, if I'm honest. But uh, uh, yeah, um, we do go there sometimes to uh, dine out. Um, brilliant. Guys, welcome to the course today. Um, I mean, it's a short course. Um, it's a uh, Malaika. It's funny. You, as I was about to say how long the course. Uh, so it's very funny you just uh, asked that question. Um, it's only an hour. It's to have a chat really about work experience because this is one of the things we've been getting a lot over the last few months. People are asking us about look work experience. What do I do? Where do I go? How do I do things? You know. So we thought, look, the best thing to do really is um, um, just have a bit of a chat session, a bit like this, so that. Um, uh, it gives you some idea as to what you can be doing for work experience. As you know, things are rather different uh, with COVID uh, around us. So, I mean, let me ask you the question first. Um, I mean, why is it important? Why are people keep asking the question? Why, why are they asking us about work experience? Why do you want to do work experience? What's the point? Why is it important? What do you think? You're welcome, Juan. Uh, insight into the life of a doctor, realistic insight, informed decision, excellent, Tabitha, brilliant, realistic insight. Yeah, so you're all coming out with all the right answers, really. 
well-rounded, see how the NHS works, <laughs> need it for a job. Um, kind of seeing what I'm getting into. Yeah, absolutely. You're all coming up with excellent answers, gain experience, pros and cons of medical career, um, better understanding, what qualities are required, communication, empathy, etc. Excellent, guys. So you've given me some lovely answers. Um, I would expect no less. You're bright young people uh, with all the right ideas. So, yeah, I um, completely agree with you. Um, let me just try and move my slides. There you go. So, yeah, so as you rightly said, um, we want to do work experience or, you know, that's what we have always done because um, it gives us a good understanding about real life um, you know, experience of working as a doctor. And when I say doctor, guys, I mean dentists as well. Um, have we got any aspiring dentists here? Uh, or is it mainly medical? Uh, is it people who want to become doctors? Is, it, is there any? Yeah, some dentists? Yeah, 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 yeah. So loads of you. Brilliant. Excellent. I'm glad you've joined because, you know, um, yeah, um, you know, certainly uh, when it comes to applying for medical school, dental school, um, uh, and, and, you know, I, I mean, in, my, in our first two years at University Imran, we had joint lectures with dentists, didn't we? Um, so, yeah, it, there's a lot of crossover between the two courses. Um, sometimes, any vets? Any vets attending today? There's, we sometimes get vet students coming as well. Um, the, again, because they do a very similar thing to get into university, the interview process, everything's very similar. So I won't be surprised if there was a vet joining in today, but nobody's um, answered that question. So I guess there isn't anybody doing veterinary medicine. But yeah, it's, it gives you real life understanding and view to how doctors work, uh, dentists work. Um, you can see the good, the bad and the ugly uh, when you do these uh, you know, uh, on-site work experience. So you get a feel um, for what it's like really. And you can make that info, for info, informed decision. Um, uh, nursing, yeah, again, uh, Sydney, there's a crossover with nursing and, and being a doctor. In fact, my uh, second daughter, she wants to do nursing rather than going into medicine. Um, and she's got her reasons. And, and, and you're right, you can make a distinction between the two careers and see which one you feel happy doing. Um, you know, the demands, you know, it's not just a panacea. It's not all, a, you know, green meadows as well. There are challenges, you know. There are challenges to um, uh, working in the NHS on social hours. You know, can you think of any other challenges? You know? Underfunding. Yeah, you're right, Megan. Long hours, work-life balance can be an issue, high pressure. Yeah, good, excellent. I'm glad you guys are coming in with a realistic overstretched stress. Good. So you, you lot are a lot more well informed, and I'll be honest with you, than I was, or for that matter, perhaps Imran was when we came into medicine. When you know we didn't have this kind of interaction with people. All we got was the direct interaction with colleagues and people who mentored us. Um, you know, um, I for me it was a surprise in, in you know coming into medicine. Um, you, you know, there is, there are, you know, there is the excellent and. Uh, lovely aspects of medicine and dentistry, but there is a heartache side of it as well. You know, some of the, you know, the, you know, what would you say makes the challenge worth it? Well, you know, Ellie Dana, the, the, there are lots of reasons why I think it's a wonderful career. And that's why I'm talking to you today, almost like an ambassador for medicine and dentistry. Because, I mean, these are wonderful, wonderful professions. They're global careers. You can take it wherever you go, because the world is a small place, remember. You can take your career with you. Um, as Dilmeet rightly says, um, it's interesting. You know, my no two days are the same. They're very different. Patient to patient different, day to day different, week to week different. Um, both of us, both uh, Imran and myself, we are portfolio doctors, which means we don't just do clinical medicine. We also teach medical students. We teach, we go to schools and teach students. We uh, teach postgraduate colleagues, so people who are doctors, and they want to specialize, so we teach them as well. I, I do research as well with the National Institute of Health Research in the UK. Um, Imran does medical uh, legal expert work because he's got a, uh, he's a qualified master's in uh, law as well. 
Um, so, you know, really, I don't think I could have done this in any other career, this variety of work that I do, the variety of work that Imran does. We can shape it to how we want. You know, do you want to do more clinical? Do you want to do less clinical? Um, once you become a doctor or a dentist, you might say, for example, as a doctor, you might say, well, actually, I actually like to work with young people, uh, youth and uh, pediatric type patients. So I'm going to become a pediatrician. OK, um, you might say, OK, I um, I want to, um, you know, I like being a doctor, but frankly, I don't like to talk to patients. OK, so, you know, look, you might laugh about it, but some people, friend of mine, um, in, in, you know, um, who I went to university with, he decided quite early in his career that actually talking to patients wasn't really his thing. So he went on to become a well-renowned pathologist, actually. So he fulfilled his, you know, he worked to his strength. He was quite academic. He enjoyed doing uh, pathology stuff. It didn't involve talking to patients, at least the ones that are alive. Um, so he, you know, I don't know if he speaks to his dead patients, but certainly um, he, he's worked his career the way he wants. I've got a friend of mine who is heavily into research, okay? Um, David Lewis, um, he, you know, he does some clinical work, but he's heavily doing research work that I, I do some uh, projects with him, but he does a lot of that on a regular basis. I've got a friend who does full-time management work now because he enjoys creating services, developing things. And so, you know, it's, it's a lovely profession which you can shape the way you want. You can make it as intense as you want, but as, as, as much as possible. I advise people about when it comes to work-life balance, always think about it the other way around. Always think about life-work balance. You know, get your life in order, enjoy your life, because that's the bit that is most important in life. Your family, yourself, your health, you know, all that is more important than I would argue um, just being career orientated. Yes, having a great career is important, but it needs to work around your life and not your life working around the career. Do you get what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, hope it makes sense. Yeah, good, excellent, excellent. So um, yeah, I'll try and answer as much many questions as I can. Imran, because we've got a, quite a big group, if you don't mind, if there's any interesting questions being asked, you let alert me because I don't want to seem rude and miss questions that people ask me. Um, so this kind of exposure, guys, will help you to kind of ask colleagues and you know, like ourselves, people who work with us, they ask us questions. What do you do? What about this? What about that? You know, and we're quite honest and upfront about how things work. And so they get a really good impression of, and dare I say there, I have come across one or two students who didn't become a doctor or a dentist. They've gone on to become other things uh, like lawyers and uh, doing accountancy or engineering or teaching or whatever, because they felt it wasn't the career for them. I'd rather you made that decision now, earlier on, rather than doing a few years of medicine and regretting. All right. So I'd rather we did it that way around. Okay, um, let me ask you another question. Um, why? Uh, why do you need to do work, work experience in regards to getting into university, do you think? You know, let me ask you that question. Some of the other questions, guys, I'm, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just leaving it for Imran to collate them because I'll uh, try and answer them towards the end because I want to go through the content of the course itself. Um, the question is, yeah, medical schools, yeah, be prepared for it, yeah, yeah, to show your passion for it. Good, good. These are the answers I want to see. Builds your character. Superb, excellent. So you're coming up uh, with all the answers. In fact, even if you didn't look at my slides afterwards, if you looked at the chat box that you're creating afterwards, there's enough there to understand um, uh, about the questions, you know, so that you guys are all well informed about it afterwards. So you do give me some great answers. Um, and I've kind of um, put these down here, all right? It's important uh, with regards to applying to university because um, medical schools have a certain amount of requirement. As you rightly said, some of you said um, that um, uh, universities do look out for a holistic candidate, a candidate who doesn't just have the requirements for your GCSEs or equivalent, 
or the requirements for air level and equivalents, but also has the requirements of passion, interest for medicine and dentistry. And, um, you know, one of those ways is to show um, that you've had an insight into the profession. Okay, so check the universities that you want to apply to, check their websites. Okay, look at what they actually want of you. Some are more specific than others. So, for example, um, some universities specifically look out for healthcare related work experience. So, like we will typically say, look, work experience isn't just um, in a hospital or in a dental faculty or a deep dentist surgery or whatever. It's also um, hobbies that you might have. It's also leading a sports team. It's also working in a charity shop or perhaps a mainstream job or waiting somewhere and so forth. And um, because everything brings experience and builds you as a character. Um, some of the universities will want you to focus on, okay, I'm not saying don't do those type of work experience, but some will say focus on healthcare related work experience. And you need to highlight those in your personal statements. All right. Other universities will be okay with a mixture of healthcare related and non healthcare related work experience. So make sure you're doing the right kind of uh, work experience. Okay. Um, the, some even go as far as stipulating the kind of experience and how long. So five days, two weeks, and so on and so forth. So some um, um, will be a bit more specific. So do check. Um, your university's website or ring the admissions officer, have a chat with them. They're quite, it's not just the one officer, there's a department, a few people, and they'll tell you, look, these are the kind of things we look out for. Ring them, talk to them, they're very approachable. Okay. Um, the, um, the focus or some of the focus that universities want you to go into is, for example, you know, working with people in the caring and the service role to look at, you know, uh, what it's like to look after people who aren't so well, people who are disadvantaged and so forth. Um, they want you to, in some cases, have direct observation of healthcare in practice. So they'll want you to have, say, experience in the care sector, in a health, NHS facility, for example. Um, so these are the things that you need, the nuances of work experience you need to try and work out um, depending on where you're applying to. Um, so make sure you, you, you know, because um, remember that these are, Personal statements that are is a component of what gets you through to interviews. Not for every medical school. For example, Manchester will want you to fill their own form in, and there you need to impress them with the uh, work experience and so forth. Um, so naturally brings me on to the next question. I bet you're all dying me to uh, to ask me this question. Um, what what kind of work experience can you do? I mean, first of all, imagine. Imagine there's no COVID-19 and all the restrictions. If that wasn't in place, what, what are the kind of uh, avenues for work experience you could think about? Volunteering, yeah, no, you're right. Shadowing a doctor, uh, GP, yeah, working in a care home, hospice, uh, shadowing, pharmacy, hospital, vaccination clinic, interviewing doctor. Oh, that's a good one. I like it. Uh, food banks, NGOs, dietitian, charities, research clinics, St. John Ambulance, air ambulance, charity shop, vet clinics. Yeah, why not? Why not? Because that's important, actually. I forgot who asked me that question. But um, you see, sometimes it's important to show that you've had an objective understanding of the profession. You say, look, I've actually compared and contrasted. I didn't just do, you know, to become a doc, come to medical school. I've not just gone and checked out medical work experience, but I've actually shadowed lawyers. I've actually shadowed uh, dentists to try and, you know, decide which is the best profession for me yeah so you're coming up with some wonderful answers guys so yeah i've kind of put a few on here you know charitable organization food banks and so forth now remember i said to you forget covid19 this time i want you to think about uh covid19 all right and and, and tell me what do you think um what do you think about will work with COVID-19 around us. Virtual placements, yeah, like this one, yeah. Online work experience. Do you know any online work experiences out there? Medic, mentor, good, excellent. Yeah, local COVID, yeah, absolutely. Local COVID vaccination center. There's loads of these clinics everywhere. Workshops, yeah, BSMS, yeah, yeah. Pre-med, yeah, observatory. Absolutely. So um, 
whilst, you know, students are asking us, look, it's really difficult now. Um, and I get that. Brighton's, you're right. Yeah, that's the one, guys. Yeah. Um, so there's loads of these uh, courses available, but you're not just limited. You're right. Have you thought about befriending somebody during COVID? It might be your neighbor down the street or in your apartment block or something um, whom you're doing a bit of shopping for. You're befriending them from a distance. It could be FaceTiming them. It could be just telephoning them and giving them like a daily, uh, you know, chat with them, you know, um, so that they're not lonely. Perhaps you're cooking food for people. Perhaps you're delivering their medicines. Perhaps you're, um, you know, setting up Zoom sessions or Facebook sessions where you're talking about, you're updating people about COVID-19. You're telling people about vaccination, you know. There's so many things you can do during COVID. COVID should not have to be a restriction. Now, universities will be understanding about your predicament, all right? So some of you will say, well, in fact, I had a call, uh, a mum called me yesterday um, asking, look, can we organise hospital work experience? Um, and I had to explain to mum that, look, it's going to be really difficult because uh, in the current climate, um, people are... Uh, very wary about people being around each other. You know, even families can't visit relatives in hospitals. Um, doctors, you know, so like, whereas before me, I could go and visit my patients on another unit um, and, and just go and see them. You can't do that now, unless you're actually working within that ward, in that department or whatever. You can't, you know, uh, HCA. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, um, Try. so I needed to think outside the box here and not just limit yourself to the traditional, like care homes. How many care homes are gonna allow you to go and volunteer now in the current situation? Do you know what I mean? It's difficult, it's gonna be difficult. And you're right, some of you are saying, yes, things are opening up. I mean, we're in the UK, especially now that the COVID rates have come down so much thanks to the vaccination program, um, hopefully you'll get more volunteering opportunities opening up. You might have GP practices opening up again. You'll probably get hospices, uh, you know, inviting patients, saying you probably get care homes allowing you in. Yeah, all great, you know. But don't forget the kind of out-of-the-box ideas, you know. Um, like I said, uh, you know, Facebook page or a social media page that helps people out, you know, uh, befriending service, del delivering food, uh, medicines, and so on and so forth, things like that, okay? Charity, absolutely, you may. Um, you know, this year, if I was doing my old job again, uh, looking at um, applicants to the university, I'd be you know, widening my net a bit and say, look, I have to be realistic about our students this year. It's not just the classic things we're looking for. You know? And if anything, it's a strength of, you, you know, test of your mentality that look, I wasn't restricted by COVID, okay? I'm not going to just sit there and say, I can't do anything, yeah? I'm gonna think outside the box. I'm gonna actually do other things in the meantime. Um, and, 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 and show experience, okay? So, yeah, don't let that um, uh, get, in, get in your way. What about um, uh, reflecting? How do you, you know, when you come to write about it, when you come to talk about these things, how should you reflect on work experience? Or do you just say, yeah, I spent some time in a charity shop? Reflect it, exactly, that's what I'm talking about. It. It's not easy to reflect, so let's have a chat about it. What have you learned? Talk, yeah, yeah, reflect cycle. Good, yeah, I like it. Star technique, skills you've learned, good. Because what it is, I mean, if you look at my next slide that kind of focuses on this, the reason why I need you to observe and reflect and think about these is because medical schools don't just want you to, or dental, they don't want you to just list, yeah, I did a work experience at a dental surgery. I spent some time with the orthodontist. Uh, I went into a factory that manufactures braces or something. They don't just want that, okay? They want you to do a deep dive, right? Into, look, um, what did you learn at the dental practice, okay? Um, you know, you know what's it like? Reflect on what's it like to be a dentist. Reflect on the qualities you see in that dentist. Is it the communication skills? Is it the empathy skills? Is it the leadership skills? Is it the team working skills? Think about it, Yeah. Reflect like that. Let's have a bit of a focus on why you're mentioning this. Why are you going to mention a, you know, a GP surgery at the hospital and leave it at that? You know, focus on why the two were quite distinct. 
All right. So what in the hospital, you might have seen something about the issue of prioritization. You might have spent some time in A&E. And so you need to think about, um, you know, how clinicians have to prioritize things. That's a skill set. OK, making some key decisions with very limited time. Um, in a GP practice, yes, there might be pressure, but the pressure is different. You might focus more on communication skills, on you know the fact that you have to have a long-term relationship with patients. Okay, the fact that actually you have to work with minimal resources. You haven't got X-rays and blood tests and this and that straight away in hand in a GP surgery. You very much rely more on your clinical experience. Okay, so think about this kind of reflection. All right. Um, when it comes to writing up. So are you with me there? Are you, are you getting the gist of it? Um, here we have Mr. Khan here, guys. Um, Imran's going to be a pretend patient. He's a 70-year-old guy. I know he looks like a baby. He looks like a you know, sprightly 19-year-old, but you're going to have to meet, use your imagination and uh, think he's 70-year-old, okay? Um, he lives in the nursing home that where you've come to do work experience, okay? Um, he's known to have mild dementia, uh, diabetes, heart disease, okay? Uh, so he's got a few things going on. And I want you to get to know him. So ask him. Um, ask him, what questions do you want to ask him? So Afia's feeling sorry for you. How's your day going? Zainab's asking you, how's your day going, Mr. Khan? Um, it doesn't really change much. Um, I suppose it's going all right. Mm. And how are you feeling today? Melody's asking this question. I'm just feeling a bit a bit low, but that's that's nothing unusual. Um, nothing's happening at the moment. It's just the same thing day in and day out. Okay. So someone is asking more specifically, what is it that's making you feel this way? I think being stuck in a nursing home, not able to go out, you know, staring out of the same window day in, day out. Um, it, it, it gets you down. Nobody's, so it, nobody, it, nobody's able to come and visit me. Sorry to hear that. Um, Iman is asking you a bit more about this. Is there anything she can do to help you? I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what can be done. Okay, well, Isabel is asking, well, is your family not in touch with you? Do they yeah. come and see you? I've got a daughter in Australia who um, phones me every so often. But that, that's about it. Okay, okay. Um, so, well, I mean, another colleague has just asked, why don't you give them a call? We do, but they've all got busy lives. Right, okay, okay. Um, so Pre, uh, Prejeet is asking, what can they do to help you feel better? I don't, I don't know, really. Mm. Mohammed's empathising and saying, oh, it's so, this is totally sad. So if he's feeling, he's empathising with you. Um, and, and they're asking you, would you like to join a support group to help you? I don't I don't really like strangers either. Okay. Zahra is asking, do you have any hobbies that might make you feel happy? I used, I used to go out and walk um, walk my dog every year. You know, well, the dog died a few years ago. Nothing, nothing since then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um uh, uh, and above is asking, do you play chess? What's chess? I'm, I'm not familiar with what chess is. Okay, okay. So chess is a game? No, I don't play any games around here. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Fine. Um, Rayan said, do you have any friends? Uh, not really. The, the, the other people in nursing home, you know, they don't really talk very much. Oh, okay. Well, Janani is offering to talk to you every other day, keep you company. Would you like that? Yeah, that, that would be good. Oh, that's nice. Good. Excellent. 
Well, and Kasim wants to know, are you on any medication at all? Yeah, I take I take a, a few pills for my diabetes. I take them with my breakfast in the morning. Mm. Okay, okay. And and what are the others for? As as far as I know, they're for I, I've had problems with my heart. Mm. I think that they're probably for them. Okay, okay, fine. And and we're being asked. Um, um, is, is your someone is saying is the medication affecting you anyway? Are you all right on them? I'm not sure it helps. I don't feel any different after taking it. Mm, mm, okay, right, fine, not a problem. Um, the Tanish priest is asking, look, what about going outside? Would, would you like to go outside? Yeah, I'd I'd I'd, I'd love to go outside. Mm-hmm. Um, we, but because of um, this coronavirus, they've they've locked us all in. Okay. Yeah. True. True. Um, what about um, uh, you know the, the colleagues are asking here um, the you know Yusuf saying what have you been up to during the lockdown? Nothing much happens here. No. Same thing day in day out. Uh, We're not even allowed to have tea together. Okay. Well, Mary wants to focus on your physical health a bit. Have you had any health checks at all lately? No, it was about a year ago I went to my surgery for my diabetes check, but I, I can't remember anything since then. Right, okay. So you've not had any physical health checks uh, at all? I remember getting the uh, an injection, which I think was the vaccine. But oh. all of that, nothing really. Right, okay, so you're not sure. Well, so Kieran's saying, well, would you like us to book you one? Would you like to talk to talk to your doctor, sorry? Yeah, I think I, I think that would be good. Mm-hmm. And Graziel's asking, uh, what kind of heart disease do you have? I remember having a heart attack a few years ago and going into hospital. Okay, um, okay. I can't remember more than that. Mm, okay, okay. Um, and then um, just one other question. Um, do you drink alcohol? Would you like some? I just have some whiskey with my tea sometimes. Okay, right. Okie dokie. Um, and um, uh, last but not least, um, is, is your health affecting your mind or your mental health well-being do you think yeah sitting here is just hopeless isn't it mm-hmm. mm, okay right okay we'll stop it there i'm sure we can go on forever um what what am i trying to make you think guys um here with, with these type of questions you know, you, you've met this patient at work experience. What are we trying to do? How you deal with elderly patients? Good one, Daniel. Rapport building, yeah. Get them to open up, yeah. And it's not an easy job, is it? Especially if they have dementia. It's not easy to build that conversation, you know? Yeah, being patient-centered. Good, excellent phraseology building trust, figure out diagnosis, socialize. Yeah, simple things. Keep it simple, Sana. Social empathy. Keep the conversation with learning things. Absolutely. Make them, oh, that's a wonderful point, Augusta. Um, Feel them, make them feel worthy. Make them friends. Exactly, exactly. 100%, guys. So you see, um, these are the type of things that we need to think about when it comes to work experience. Um, Of course, it's difficult. It's difficult, isn't it? Um, no, for, for um, I think people are very interested in you didn't drink alcohol in real I think they want to know if you drink alcohol in real life. <laughs> Maybe. No, unfortunately, I don't drink alcohol in real life. So um, the, the point is, guys, um, when you're coming across patients, whether in a GP surgery, uh, whether it's uh, you're in a hospital, whether it's um, in a nursing home, be interested in people. 
okay, in dentistry, in medicine, all right, it's not just about the root canal treatment. It's not just about, um, you know, dealing with a person's diabetes. Think about how that diabetes affects them, how it can affect their memory, how it can affect their mentality, how it can affect their, uh, the fact that they're walking on things and they um, can't feel the feet, for example. Think about, so you need to be patient-centered, as somebody said earlier on, um, when, you, when you're dealing with patients. And this is the kind of thing you want to reflect on when it comes to personal statements. Um, I always kind of point people to three words, okay? Be in their shoes, empathy, Abdurrahman, yeah. So I always point people to three words, okay? Home, work, and play. Okay, so when you look at a person, now, of course, you're going to deal with their diabetes. You're going to deal with their heart problem. You're going to do, I hope so anyway. But what you're going to do is think about how this person's, so Mr. Khan's got dementia problem. He struggles to remember. How is it going to affect their home life? Assuming he's at home. Hey, how would you know? Treat the patient, not the disease. Yeah, absolutely. It might not, exactly. You're asking him about the right, he probably doesn't even recognize him anymore. And they've been put off because they can't relate to the loved one anymore. They might get scared. Uh, absolutely. So from a home perspective, um, they are going to struggle with their memory. They don't know who their friends are, who their family is. They can't make a cup of tea for themselves anymore. It's frustrating, Bushra. You're absolutely correct. The family, go, of course they do. They get upset, they get frustrated as well. It works both ways. Trust, absolutely, Sarah, when you can't recognize somebody, it's hard to trust them. You're absolutely right. You guys are really good. I'm very impressed. So that's how I want you to think, okay? Um, the next word is work. So imagine uh, Mr. Khan is, you know, he's, I don't know, 60-year-old guy, five years away from retiring, suddenly has a major stroke or a heart attack or something like that, and then... How is that going to impact his work life? Forgetting tasks. Yeah, mortgage might not be paid off. Income issues. Yeah, he'll retire. Well, he'll probably get forced out of work if he's not able to work. He'll have to leave his job. Absolutely, Aksan, you're absolutely correct. Uh, uh, he, yeah, pressurized Atham, you're absolutely right. Um, Motivation, yeah. So you're all, you're all you're all getting to those important points. Uh, I want you to think about. So you know th this person who work he's worked for the last 30, 40 odd years in the same job or well the same company perhaps. Maybe his social life, wrote, you know, kind of works around his work life. He might lose all of that. Um, you know, things that he enjoys doing. It might be related. So once you guys start working, you'll see it that actually your social circle tends to be fitting around your work life as well because your friends, your colleagues end up becoming your friends. Your, um, you know, the people you work with, even customers and patients, although patients we don't socialize with, in, you know, if you're in other lines of work where, for example, you know, you've got, you know, companies you work for or something, people from another company become friends. So like in a healthcare setting, I would say, for example, I work with pharmacists, I work with dentists, I work with nurses, I work with HCAs, I work with PAs. They have become my friends, so we socialize together as well, you see. You see what I mean? So um, this is, the, I think, the level of thinking you need to think about when it comes to relating this kind of experience. Uh, and of course, the last bit, remember, home, work, and play. Play is about how will... A condition affect a person's ability to uh, enjoy a leisurely activity, re recreational activity. Does it limit it? Does it re reduce the chances? Does it reduce the social circle? Hence, affects their um, you know you know recreational uh, capacity. Do you see what I mean? So that's the kind of thing you want to think about: home, work, and play. All right. Um, I'm going to end it there, um, the, I think what Imran, I mean, this is what I was referring to in that, what we're not able to do to, to face to face. We're trying to, 
do the face-to-face -face courses later on this year. Uh, and we'll put regular updates on our website where we do face-to-face -face work experience. However, um, with the COVID situation, we just don't know yet, okay? We we'll certainly will be doing virtual work experience, but in terms of face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, we don't know. Keep an eye on things on our website. Um, these are quite intensive programs, you know, in terms of full day program of work experience um, like that. Uh, by all means, we can um, uh, see how those go on. If we do face to face, we will let you know. And, and details are on our website. Um, the questions, Imran, uh, you'll have had questions in the comment section. Let's deal with some of those. Yeah, yeah. So I think th there's some of the questions are about work experience. There's also questions about other things as well. Um, there's a question here about um, do, do medical schools take the personal statement into account? Do medical schools take the UCAS personal statement? Do they actually read this anymore? Okay, so what do you guys think? You, you tell me. Do universities use personal statements? Yeah, an overwhelming yes, lots of yeses. Yeah, 18, gosh. Yeah, so in, in the main, yes, universities do. Um, there are exceptions, aren't they? Do you know of any exceptions? Depends on the uni. Um, so there are, there are some universities that will ask you to fill a separate form in. And a classic one I'll give you is like Manchester, for example, that will ask you to fill their own, um, you know, uh, statement or questionnaire, like, you know, answer a few questions. And they look at that uh, for selection purposes. OK, does that answer the question, Imran? I think I think I would also add to that. Um, um, if they say that they don't use your personal statement, still, still do a Remember, you're applying to four medical schools. Still do a, a top personal statement. Um, I mean, I went to a session recently where they said, you know, they just don't bother looking at it because everybody's got an excellent personal statement. Um, and quite worryingly, some of them even said they don't look at the referee because everybody's got a, you know, an excellent reference, basically. Um, what, what I would say is if there's anything, anything extra, for example, extenuating circumstances, you know, get your, get your teacher to, to, to send that in separately. Some, some medical school will want you to fill in a separate form for extenuating circumstances. So do, do let them know if you want to give any extra information that isn't in your personal statement um, 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 and, and that could affect your uh, application. Um, as I say, the, the UCAS personal statement, even though they might say they don't look at it, I'm sure at some point in the process, if there was a tiebreaker or they were deciding between two candidates, you know, they would look at it and see see... Um, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, experience and insight you've got into being a doctor. Imran, okay, whilst you, um, you know, somebody's asking me uh, any other tests you need to, to, to get into medical school. Well, um, I can't remember the person who asked that question in the chat box. Well, it, it depends if, if it's a UCAT university you're applying to, it's UCAT, if it's BMAT, then it's BMAT. Uh, some people apply to both types of universities, UCAT and BMAT. So you'll have to do both tests, yeah? Um, UCAT tips, I'm not going to go into that uh, too much because we did that uh, course twice this morning. Um, you know, if you do, um, uh, you can join us on another course or, you know, email us if you want, uh, you know, Imran to send you out information about, you know, recordings from the UCAT course. Yeah, I'll be sending, also, I'll be sending an email to everyone who's attended both courses this morning. Um, hopefully on Monday or Tuesday, with details of recordings and where you can download, um, you know, the, the UCAP planner and things like that. Yeah. And next question, Imran. Um, there's a question about um, the email as well. UCAP course. If some, if somebody has a, a personal illness, mm. can can their own personal experience be counted as work experience? So if it's your own personal, it might be something that motivates you towards medicine. It's probably giving you an insight to the profession. Uh, however, as work experience, you won't probably dwell on that as work experience, really. That's your personal circumstance, you see. So I'm not sure if you would see that as work experience. I probably wouldn't. 
Yeah. Uh, work experience in other countries. Yes, of course, it's not a problem. Uh, we come across students all the time um, doing work experience abroad. It's not a problem. Um, yeah. Anything else, Imran? Yeah, there's a question here about um, how, how long should we actually volunteer for? Is there a duration? Well, some universities will stipulate, you know, some will say, look, they want to see two weeks worth, some will say a few days worth. But no, um, in general, you'll find actually not everybody says you need to have X amount of uh, work experience. You know, it's more, uh, you know, how recent is it? it is. Some will say, um, you know, so if you came to our last course that we did when universities were invited to talk about getting to medicine, some say they only look at experience in the last 18 months, some in the last 12 months, just so that it's fresh, it's new, it's up to date, and they know that you're dead cert about coming into the course. So um, it's about when you've done it, perhaps. And I think, you know, whether it's two weeks or two months, it doesn't really matter in general. You know, some do are specific, but in general, not. Yeah, uh, and Abdul, there's a question about, um, in general, can we come into Hazel Valley, perhaps, and do work experience into the well, practice? Yeah, so we are no different to any other GP surgery, are we? In the sense that um, we still have to follow COVID rules. Um, so in the last year or so, it was very difficult to do any. In fact, we didn't host any in-face, in-person work experience for COVID restriction reasons. However, as things ease in the next few months, perhaps we will open up again for in-person work experience. Yeah, there's a, I think a question about, um, it was asked on the previous session as well, about how do actually universities actually verify and check what work experience you have you, you've done? So, I mean, the answer to that, guys, is, well, you shouldn't mention it about anything that's not legit anyway. So, you know, the assumption there has to be, well, anything you've done is legitimate, it's real experience, because you should be able to stand the test of scrutiny. If a university so chooses within the right to say, well, actually, you mentioned you've been to work with X uh, organization, I would like to contact them. You know, they probably won't in general, but if they do, what are you going to do? So, stick, you know, stick to legitimate work experience, uh, you know, real things. Be honest, you know. You shouldn't be doing anything in life that's dishonest. Yeah. And Abdul, the question here, I mean, perhaps it's a bit premature, but um, what kind of questions come up on medical school interviews relating to COVID? So I, I think, I'd, I mean, I'd draw, I mean, we, we have got, we will do later on in the year, won't we, Imran, uh, introductory courses for interviews, and uh, we'll cover these things more in depth. And certainly in the medical interview courses, we cover these things in a lot of depth. Um, but COVID is a, it's going to be a hot topic. It was a hot topic in the interviews that happened in the last few months. It's going to be a hot topic next year for sure. They may ask you guys even more questions with regards to COVID vaccination, for example, how you deal with people who have vaccination hesitancy. How do you talk about the pros and cons of vaccines? You know, what's the implications to the NHS of administering vaccines? What about what about you know an implication of no vaccines? Uh, on, on the workplace, how, for example, um, you, you know, the, um, you, you know, somebody's dying on your unit with COVID, lack of uh, family engagement uh, because of, you know, the infection control rules. How do you manage that difficult situation where the family wants to come in, for example? So they'll put you in a bit of an ethical uh, and logistical situation. So these kind of things they might want to discuss. You want to bring up about ethical issues. You want to discuss about current legislation and so forth. So these questions quite can quite easily come up. Mm. Bear in mind, uh, on interviews, uh, they can actually take it a next step. So they can give you role play. So they can actually give you a, a, a simulated patient um, that you have to physically, you know, you have to actually talk to and communicate with um, you know, for example, one station we know from last year, um, you know, they could give you a, 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 a basically a mother, yeah, who's reluctant to get her child vaccinated. It doesn't have to be COVID, but and then you have to explain to the mum, you know, the pros and cons basically of vaccination. Um, so th there is a, 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 a quite a bit of knowledge base 
that you need to kind of read and revise about interviews. And then on top, you've got the practice element where you've actually physically got to talk and communicate. All those skills, all those skills can be acquired, but I wouldn't focus on that at this stage. You know, at this stage, uh, most of you should be focusing on your UCAT. And then in August, your personal statement. We'll get to interviews, um, hopefully after you've submitted your um, UCAS application form back in, uh, back in October. Any other questions, Imran? I think that was it. There was a, a brief question about GCSE requirements and entry requirements for medicine, but I think we've tackled quite a bit of them, haven't we? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, whilst you look at further questions, I mean, as far as GCSEs are concerned, yes, universities vary slightly in how they measure the GCSE grades in terms of the scoring they put down, in terms of the weighting. Uh, some are, you know, certainly with your core subjects, very particular about. So make sure, make sure when you're applying, you look at the GCSE requirements, how specific they are. Do your GCSE grades fulfill the requirements? Okay. Um, the, you know, while some universities, for example, Oxbridge is classic, where they say they don't necessarily ask for anything specific in the GCSEs. However, when me and Imran did some uh, FOI um, check on the kind of students that get entry into Oxbridge, you find actually the majority of them have had nines and eights. Um, for, for GCSE. So that's a reality. Uh, same goes for A-levels. Uh, what grades will people accept? You know, they're very strict. It, if it's, certainly if it's a conditional offer, um, they'll be very strict about the grades that they want. Unless, of course, um, you know, you've had exceptional circumstances that limited the grades or for whatever reason, in which case you'll, um, um, you know, um, Alexandra, what if you got seven and eight? Well, actually, for most universities, medical schools, it's not a problem. You know, just make sure that your GCSEs gives you the right number of points that are required to get you through to interview. Uh, you'll find that on their website. If it's difficult to find, then just ring the admissions department and say, guys, you know, um, I've got these grades. Um, would I, from a GCSE perspective, get through? Um, of course, it depends on your personal statement, perhaps, on your UCAT score and other things to get to interview, but will those GCSEs put me at any disadvantage at all? You can check that. Do they mind if you have a gap year? No, um, I think if you've got your offer uh, from the university and decide to take a gap year, it, for in the main, no. Um, some, you know, once you've got the offer, uh, for you to then defer it, not a problem. If you don't apply, go have a gap year. Does that, um, if so long as you've got the grades, uh, to apply the following year, it's not a problem. You're not resitting, are you? Bear in mind if you if you um, want to undertake a gap year, um, if you've got an offer um, um, and you meet the grades, and then you ask, they could they they they're in there in there you know they can refuse basically. Um, you know the, some of them will only allow a gap year in extenuating circumstances. It's a different different um, ball game if you don't you know don't get any offers uh, and you want to take a gap, gap year. That's a different situation. But, but you know universities might be a bit reluctant to give you a gap year at the moment um, without any extenuating circumstances. Great, fantastic. I think um, shall I bring it to a close, Imran? It's getting to the hour limit, so um, I, I'd like to bring the. Uh, day to a close guys um, you know uh, thank you very much for joining us um, it's been good to have this chat with you it's been a busy session over 500 of you uh, attended the course I hope you got something out of the course I hope it helps uh, you know um, certainly courses like that it's purely we're doing it on a voluntary basis just to because once upon a time people helped me and Imran get into medicine you know uh, our families our modest you know, background, my dad was a textile worker, uh, Imran's dad was a bus driver, and we, I don't think we, I think we would have struggled to get into medicine had other people not helped us, advised us and guided us. So I think that's what we're trying to create, a culture of giving back. You guys will do hopefully the same one day and guide other people into the profession. Uh, it is a great profession to get into. I wish you all well. Make sure you do try to get into uh, becoming doctors and dentists. I think you're all you're certainly a very clever bunch from the questions you're asking. I wish you all the very best. Uh, both of us wish you well. 
Uh, we might see you in other courses in the future, but certainly look after yourselves and don't give up on your dreams, guys. Yeah!